what's it mean to you to get together with these guys? Well, it's it's great to see everybody again. Every time I look at everybody, I just think how old we are getting. <laughs> uh, but it, it's a lot of fun to do this. It really is. And I was thrilled that we had that many guys overseas in Russia this time. Uh, we had an awful lot of guys, and they treated us like gold. Uh, and it was wonderful. And, and sometimes I wonder. I just don't understand it because... Russian government over there treated us like gold. We can't get any help from the government here. Don't understand it. How do I mean? We can afford to bring those guys over. We went over there because they paid. The Russians paid. And they, we were promised this two years, a year and a half ago, that the government was going to get involved. And then all of a sudden, two months ago, they told us they're not involved because they only get involved in 25-year anniversaries and 50-year anniversaries. Well, we can't wait to 50, I can tell you that. Most of us won't be around, and I was absolutely pissed off about it because why wait two months before? Give us a chance to try to find some corporate sponsors or something, you know? Yakushev, uh, who I became very good friends with, he was like, he couldn't believe that they weren't coming over, but I can't afford to get them over here. So when you say a, a lot of you guys might not be here for the 50th, 50th That's anniversary, right. how much more important does that make this 40th anniversary? What does this well, it does, but i I got to tell you, the Russians are going to honor the 72 Russian team at the Sochi Olympics, and I'd like us to be there. And um, I know one thing, once we get there, the Russians will take care of us. But we got to get there, and we're going to need some help, and uh, that's what we, we want to do. And if we can do that and we'll be honored there, then after, I think it's just about over. Don't you agree? Because mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of us are going to make it to 50. I'd when, be shocked if most of us do. When you look back at 72, uh, a lot of people look at your speech after Game 4 as a real turning point in the series. When you look back at that video of yourself... It was a turning point for you people. It wasn't a turning point for us. It wasn't. It just wasn't. turning point for us is when we became a team in Sweden. That's when the turning point for us was had nothing to do with the speech. Half the guys never even heard it. I didn't even see it until 10 years later. So it wasn't a turning point for us. It's a turning point for the fans, I guess. And that's maybe that's why. I had no idea what I said. 10 years later, I looked at it, and the first, my first reaction was, oh, I'm embarrassed. I almost swore twice during it, and there's no doubt about that. And uh, it, was, uh, it was because of four or five young guys that were standing by the Zamboni entrance in Vancouver yelling that communism is better and all this other stuff and I almost threw my stick at him like a spear. Communism is not better. Period. How big was the moment? Like, Obviously we're celebrating this 40 years later. When Paul scored that goal, uh, what was your vantage point? And what was my vantage point? Moment? I was uh, at the face-off dot to the right of Tretiak and Lyapkin and Vasiliev screwed up, and the puck squirted, and I was skating backwards to go back, and I just shot it at the net. And like nine out of ten times, I hit the net. I never, I very seldom missed the net when I had an opportunity to hit it. And um, it went on the net, and Trechak, unexplained reason, pushed the rebound straight out. And Polly, who had fallen behind the net, got up and came up, because they must have lost him. And he just came out and put the rebound in. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. That's as close as I've ever come to kissing another guy. <laughs> it's one of those moments that, you know, just it's like a photograph in your mind or did it happen in slow motion? I'll you? tell you the thing that really happened in slow motion to me with Peter oh. Mahovlich, um I think it was the goal I scored to make it 5-4 or 5-5, five, five, I can't remember now. But Pete came up the right wing all in slow motion, shot the puck in, went on, on Luchenko. I went to the front of the net. This is all in slow motion. He shot it. The puck hit something and bounced up. I put my hand up, excuse me, threw the puck down, took a swipe. It, I threw it down so hard, it bounced over the stick, and Trechak went down, and the next one I put in, you know, because it, it was that quick that I did it. And all of that was in slow motion. I never had that before, and I never had it since. That's the truth. I, I could remember that play because it was in such, 
a slow motion. I see Peter just barreling up the right wing, throwing a puck in, and he was going like a steam engine, and there was no way that Luchenko was going to get the puck from him. No way. Because Peter wasn't going to let that happen. At what point did this series turn into a friendly exhibition series to an all-out war? After the first game. Maybe after the first period. We had no idea. And the truth is, I said this too before, we should have never been called Team Canada. We weren't Team Canada. We were Team NHL. And the truth is, if we were Team Canada, Gordie Howe, Bobby Hull, Davey Keon, Jerry Cheever, just to name four, would have been on the team. Can you imagine if Orr had played and Hull had played and Howe had played? We would have still lost the first game, there's no doubt about it, because we had no idea. But after that, no. We're talking about all these memories. Maybe uh, something off the ice that you really remember? Yeah, it was shitty they treated us in Russia. Well, it's ironic. You say 40 years later. How 40 years old? later. Boy, I'll tell you that they find out about capitalism in 14 years. Wow. It, listen, it wasn't the people. It was not the people. The people are fine. The only difference between North Americans and Russians is the language and a little politics. But other than that, everybody's the same. They all want to live. They want to enjoy themselves. You know what I mean? Just like we do. <clears throat> It was the politics. It was the politics between the Canadian government and, and the Russian government. And they turned us, both teams, into political footballs. Went back and forth, back and forth. I'll give you a funny story. When we landed here in, in Montreal, I mean, Eagleson was a conservative, liberal, Trudeau was a liberal. Trudeau was waiting for us at the back of the plane. In those days, you, you know, the stairs came down on the back of the planes. And we were going to go out there, and Eagleson said, no, we're going out the front. They argued for about 15 minutes, and my brother and I and Cash, although Tony and Wayne, I don't think, could get up. So we sat there, and Trudeau came on that plane and came to me, and he said, thank you and good luck. I said, I'm sorry about what happened, Prime Minister. And he said, politics. I didn't like that. I didn't like that they put us in the middle. Then we get here, they put us in the middle with some premier named Davis and made a big thing about conservatives. I, who gives a crap whether you're conservative or liberal or whatever you are, you know? Don't put us in the middle. And that's what they did, and that's the part I didn't like. What was it like flying over to Russia knowing you were down in the series and going into... Uh, we had a blast. We went to Sweden. We were drunker than hoodals by the time we got to Sweden. We did. I mean, hey, listen. We weren't going to change our style, but I can tell you this, in Sweden we became a team and we realized, that I did anyway and I know I said it publicly to the players, the only way to beat these guys is to try to scare the hell out of them and intimidate them, be crazy, be lunatics, because they don't, they don't understand if we play that way, because we knew we were going to get the short end of the stick in the referee and we knew that. So if we're going to get it, then make sure we get it good and give it to them good and see if we can scare them a bit. And I think we intimidate them a bit. Yeah, I do. I know Paul scoring the goal has been a bit of a, a roller coaster ride uh, for him throughout his life. Uh, I know he didn't want people remembering uh, him just for that uh, back earlier in his career. Um, have teammates on the team kind of you know helped him through that? And uh, I know he's accepting of it now and he's grateful for the moment. but. Hey, listen, Mike Rooney scored, Ruzioni scored one goal in 1980 and he's lived off it for 45 years or whatever it is. Why not? If I was Paul living in Canada, I would have milked it like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> but I live in the States and they didn't give one damn about the series. Not one iota. And that's what I said. Those guys, I'm going back to Boston. Rod and Ratty and uh, Brad are going back to New York and my brother's going to Chicago and with Whitey and Billy, you know. They, they didn't care. It's the guys who played in Toronto and Vancouver and Winnipeg and, and Montreal. <laughs> they cared. And the truth is, if we had lost, I don't know what would have happened to those guys. Did you ever think about that? Sure, all the time. Absolutely, I think about it. Like I said, do I, I was in Boston. I, we got home whatever day. The next morning, I was uh, on the plane to Boston. The next day, I was on the ice practicing and played a preseason game that night. There was nothing. I, it was over. And I just wanted to get home, and that's it. And um, 
Because I tell you, it, it became a political war. It did. In my mind, it did, and we had to win at all costs, no matter what. War is war. Nowadays, we fight wars like you don't want to win. The team goes on to uh, Canada's Walk of Fame in a couple of nights. So, what do you think? I won't be here. Hmm. Don't enough. care. <laughs> How come you don't care? Because <laughs> big deal. That's all I got to say for about it. It's great. Good for the team. I don't care. <laughs> it's not a hockey thing? I don't care about things like that. I never have, never cared about it. It's like people say, Hall of Fame. Okay, big deal. Trutchak's in the Hall of Fame. Big deal. Al Ligason was in the Hall of Fame. I mean, come on. It doesn't make any difference. I know what I did in my mind. That's all that matters to me. But I don't give uh, one damn what other people think. But the win in 72 means a lot to you. It means a lot because of our country. And that was it. And that's all it meant to me. It didn't mean the Stanley Cup. That's what I was all about. Winning the Stanley Cup and still am. How do you compare the two? Stanley Cup is a, is a battle for 80 games. Well, 77 and 76 in my time. 76 games and all those playoff games, it's a battle, boy. And you get and you grow up as a kid just wanting to win a cup. This was supposed to be, an, we were told it was supposed to be an exhibition. Like an all-star game. Oh, boy. It was, it was, it was different. And, and we didn't realize how different it was until after the first game. At least I didn't. I still didn't think that it was going to be this, turn into this big of a deal. 